What's Zero Gravity, YouTube Sapiens? This is your guy, Walt Mack, whose train of thought is on track. And this is Media Scavenger Hunt. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, tell a friend and whatnot. And today, we are reviewing NBC's Crossbone. And this right here takes another fascinating look into uh, piracy as far as it happens in uh, 1712 and the British Empire is at its height and um, most of their ruling force as far as with the trading of different things comes over the sea. So a lot of their ships was uh, plundered by pirates and one of the most famous pirates that we know is Blackbeard who is played by John Malkovich excellent playing of this well I'll get into that in one second um, and on this particular ship at the beginning of it it's uh, this device is a, a longitude and latitude uh, cro uh, chronometer device that will help them better to navigate the seas because they're losing so many of their ships and everything this is what the British Empire they came up with and this this um, inventor on this particular ship and he's to get from he's he's uh they're trying to get him to London or England or somewhere they're trying to get him somewhere and so in the beginning scenes they on the ship and all of a sudden they see they see another ship in the distance you know somebody got their little telescope and oh captain this ship is here so they see the ship and then of course it's true enough it's a pirate ship it has the flag you know with the skull and crossbones things of that nature right there come up on the you know they fighting and everything and I'm telling you this scene right here uh, I kinda thought that NBC was gonna be you know uh, because they was gonna gloss it up a little bit or make it not so real, but you know they they did they think this is a real actual pirate. Uh, you felt like okay, yeah, this this is some drama right here. People getting gunned up, stabbed, decapitated, things of that nature right there. Throats being slipped, and then you you start seeing different people because they have you know sh shots and frames on these certain people. So you like oh this must be a a character that's going to be later on you're seeing things of that nature true enough it is so while all this is happening you see this one you see this one guy that we later find out his name is uh Thomas Lowe he's a um, physician as well as a jack of all trades he uh he goes he goes and he gets um you got you got Nightingale the inventor and he says listen is like we being, you know, pirates on here. We can't let them get this, this device. So the first thing he does, he takes a gun, he shoots the device, blows it up. Then he burns. Then he burns the ledger with all the, uh, with the code, with the whole little code up in it and everything. He burns that. Then he poisons Nightingale. He say, "I'm sorry for doing this, but I got to poison you." So when he does this, then the pirates they finally break into the break into the room that he had barricaded himself into, and they take him to, they take him to the this island because they don't know where Black you know nobody knows about where Blackbeard is hiding at and all this. This is the legend and everything of him. So it fat it um, what it does is it, it has a flashback of eight weeks ago where he's at he's in Jamaica uh, the um, the governor of Jamaica, I forget the I forget the actor's name, but he's a famous actor too. He's uh, telling Thomas, he's like, listen, I want you to be on this ship. I want you to you know protect the old boy, but your real mission is to kill Blackbeard. And he like kill Blackbeard. Blackbeard been dead. Matter of fact, didn't you kill him? He was like, yeah, I thought I did, but you know his legend grows wide and everything. He could be in one of these plenty of these islands around and everything. But so that's your real mission right there for you. If you get the opportunity to kill Blackbeard, and I want his head. So bang. So they fast forward. They uh they at the port of this island. They don't tell you which island it is, but it's some little remote island, and it's a uh, you know like a pirate's haven. You know, and they have they show that they're you know they're uh, taking all the all the the, uh, the booty or the that's what they call it you know and all all the uh, jewels or um, things of nature up off of the 
off of the ship and the quartermaster is like all right this is worth this this is worth this we can trade this we can do something with this and it's a female so they uh they got this guy thomas uh low and his little his little sidekick there and they got him in shackles as well as with the rest of the prisoners and everything you know they're gonna give him the choice either to you know be the pirates or you know get killed or whatever so Thomas Lowe, he says to the baby, he's like, listen, um, you know, he run, he, he say some smooth stuff too and everything. You could tell that, you could tell that, you know, they got a little chemistry going and everything, but she about her business and everything. So she was like, yeah, you know, you in, you in shackles, you can't do nothing for me right now and everything. So they, they take him to go see Blackbeard. Now how they, how Blackbeard's scene comes in is so, so nice. I'm like, wow, this is right here. This is an intelligent pirate. He's sitting there on a bunch of silk satin pillows. He got his little silk, uh, his little silk garb on his wardrobe. He's sitting in a Buddha's, Buddha's position. And then as Thomas Lowe is being escorted in by these, by these pirates, pirates and everything, we see somebody else on the side got this dude and he's he's uh tied up and everything got a gag in his mouth and whatnot so uh blackbird blackbeard turns around he say oh allow me to introduce myself and slits old boy's neck that was gagged up like wow for real that's how you introduce yourself so thomas Lowe, he uh he breaks free of the dudes. He grabs some gunpowder and a, and a candle and put it on the guy's neck that was the uh, neck that was slit and slice it up and it you know you know uh, bring it, the fire you know um, coat the fire uh, the fire and the gunpowder seals up his seals up his neck and everything. So they start talking and you know they really talking this you know like Blackbeard like listen. You know, you know, uh, you know who I am, or you think you know who I am, and everything. We don't use that name, Blackbeard, around here. I'm the commodore of this this island, and everything. And old boy, like, yeah, your legend say you this, that, and the third. He's like, well, you know, it's a lot of things my legends say, and everything. You know, don't believe everything you hear. You know, one thing for sure, uh, since since old boy, it looks like old boy is about to die, and everything. You a physician. Uh, you need to keep him alive because we need to for them him to fix this device, re redo the device, as well as uh, decipher the uh, the ledger and everything because it's coded. And once you do that right there, you know we'll see what your worth is if whether you're gonna live or die. So old boy, like man, I'm not afraid of dying or none of that. He like uh, Blackbird grab him, grab him like man, listen. A whole bunch of them legends is untrue, but one legend is true. I guess what I want, and you gonna give it to me. So fast forward. So fast forward to now. He's in there. Now he's in the um, in the room with uh, with uh, Nightingale. Nightingale. He had poison. He had put like some cyanide poison in his mouth, a little tube in his mouth. So I guess it was one of those slow, slow depths and everything. He's like, I could keep him alive just for a little while. Cause my true mission is I got to kill Blackbeard. This is what he's telling his his little his sidekick and everything. So his sidekick, you know, playing a scary role, like, oh, how you gonna do that? He's like, well, I gotta, you know, get some get some things from the uh, the quartermaster and everything. So he tells the um, he tells one of the pirates, he was like, uh, look, you know, I need some medical supplies and everything. So they go in. They go down there to the, the to the docks and everything. You know, it's look like a little, uh, you know, they got their little kiosks up there, and you know, they selling their fruits and vegetables and you know other little things and everything. And uh, he he sees the quartermaster, the female, as a matter of fact, and he asks her. He say, uh, "Look, it's like I need this, that, and the third. She's like, "Well, you know, you got the money to pay for that because you know what." It's like money to pay for this. Like, wow, you know, I was just in here because she's like, yeah, I know that. So, wh how you gonna pay for this? So, you know, you, they f lightweight flirting and everything. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, Blackbeard, you know, it's like this, this, the the way they portraying him, the way John Malkovich is playing, uh, portraying him, it's like 
a brilliant strategist like he's like a master chess player and things of that nature and very knowledgeable about a whole bunch of things as far as different cultures and stuff because you know he's been you know on the sea all his life and raping and pull uh pillaging villages and things of that nature right there that you know he want he he's a thinking man so he discovers new things and he wants to know what they you know how they work and everything he makes the reference of he believes god is a great uh clock man uh uh master and he's just winded up the world and he's watching it unwind and things of this nature right there so he's real philosophical and things of that nature right there and later we find out that he's you know he's been to china because he's having extreme headaches and he performs acupuncture on himself and he's looking like Pinhead for real. He's looking like the new version of Pinhead. So that was funny right there. That self right there. Looking at that. And then we also find out these headaches that he's having. He's seeing visions of a, a, a ghostly lady. That somebody's haunting him. But uh, what I really like about this. That okay you have your you have your you know your bronze and everything but he has his brains is mostly these different women he has this one woman like i said that's the quarter master that you know handles all the uh the, the trading and, and and things of that nature right there but then he has this other lady that you know helps him like she's like his uh she's like his right hand his his right hand woman where she tells him like yeah this is not going right right here i can i can break the code and everything but i'm thinking old oh, boy's lying things of that nature right there so you know he like his advice is you know is uh and everything so i like that right there as well as they got this sister girl on there and she's a pirate you know but you know she's no holes bar, no nonsense type of pirate and everything. So the female cast in there is solid. They have a nice solid female cast in there. And um, the quartermaster, she has. Uh, we don't know if this is her husband or just somebody that she's living with. But the dude is in a wheelchair and everything, and he watches her swim naked at night in the, in the morning and things of that nature right there. And she, you know, she comforts him things of that nature right there you know so they're steady throwing in different characters meanwhile back in jamaica the governor of jamaica as a matter of fact the one that sent thomas uh low on his mission he's uh he's torturing uh, he's torturing one of blackbeard's pirates got him hanging and he's just talking to him all calm and cool and collective and i'm like man the way they torturing people and this, you know, like, you know, like, this is everyday affair. They have no qualms about doing anything. It was so smooth about that. And he tells, like, just tell me what Blackbeard is. And I'll set you free. Oh, boy, he's not talking. Why he's hanging. Eyes almost bulging out of his neck, as a matter of fact. <laughs> like this. So he stabs him in the stomach and says, uh, what do you say? What he say? He says some clever line. I was like, "Oh man, that's an ill way to, to the last words you hear." You uh, I forget what he say. I had to look at it again. But when you see the scene, you be like, "Oh man, the dialogue in here is so rich." And uh, one of the things Blackbeard shows Thomas, uh, Thomas Lowe, he shows him a man that he flayed him, meaning he took literally took all the skin up off of this man. And then set him up in wax. So now he has a wax figurine of one of the men that he has tortured for information. Just letting it be known that this is the type of stuff. I mean, his his room is laid out with trinkets and treasures and clocks and things of that nature. It looks real beautiful. It looks like a museum. But in the middle of it is a wax figurine of a man that he flayed. I mean, man, it, it, it's wild. So anyway, so Thomas he's like he's telling his he's telling his little his little sidekick he's like yeah man uh, yeah we're we're gonna have to kill we're gonna have to kill Blackbeard we're that's that's the mission right there he's like well how are we gonna do that he is like well you don't kill Blackbeard stab him you gotta you know you gotta be cunning and witty and all that you know we'll get his guards down things of this nature while this is happening Nightingale dies so when Nightingale dies you know that. That is over. That's over with. So they can't use that play right there. The the pirates is about to try to come in. The pirates uh, is like, how did Nightingale die? 
He struggles. He fights with him. Pushes pushes the pirate out. The pirate's, pirate's trying to shoot through the door. They barricade the door. He searches all on Nightingale and finds the cipher, the, the key cipher, uh, the key cipher uh, sheet, which was on a, which was on like a, a handkerchief. And when the uh, when the guards finally break down, the, the pirates finally break down the door. He's holding it with a candle, and Bl Blackbeard comes up in there. He's like, "Oh, so uh, what's that right there in your hand? Because you're about to die." He's like, "Well, this is the key cipher. This is the key cipher sheet right here. This right here to break the code to the to the ledger and everything that is it, halfway burnt up and everything, as a matter of fact." And so, you know, they talking all cool and calm. He's like. Yeah, you must not value your life that much. He was like, yeah, I value my life a lot. Then so he burns it up. And then Blackbeard like, oh. it's like, oh, yeah, you bold. We about to get you. We about to do you in. He say, listen, I memorized this. So keep me alive and I'll decode it. So I'm like, okay. So I was like, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you didn't memorize this in, in 30 seconds. Well, you know, he probably has a photographic memory. You know, whatever's clever. So Blackbeard like, all right, well, this is what we're about to do. We're about to put you in another place, and you're about to get to work. You're about to decode this for me because we have a decoder. My girl can decode this. It's going to take her longer, and that's just going to get me upset. And <laughs> I'm going to do so. He's like, I got you. I'm going to do what I'm doing. So while they doing that, Blackbeard is in his room, and he got he has a harem of women. You know, he getting it on. Blackbeard, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I. Uh, I wanted to hear some uh, hear some uh, some exotic music in the background with all these women and everything. So the pirates, they uh, while old boy is in his room, uh, Thomas Lowe and his his little flunky, I forget his little his little guy's name. They in they in their room, you know, trying to decipher the code and everything, and talking talking in secrecy and everything. Pirates bust in, an old girl who's uh, Blackbeard's right hand woman. She, uh, you know, tells them, you know, orders them to grab uh, Thomas Lowe. And they're, they're about to torture him. So they gag, put a gag in his mouth and they grab a little uh, a wick and they light it. And now they're torturing him by burning his, his fingers one by one. I'm talking about, I was like, dang, I was like, man, this right here is graphic. With all the uh, the violence they didn't have, you know, the only thing they missing is a little nudity. But you know, this is NBC, so they're not gonna give you any nudity. But they would give you graphic violence. And I see, I was like, okay, you know, two out of uh, two out of three ain't bad. Whatever's clever. So, uh, <laughs> so they're torturing him, and this guy sees this, and for some way, I, I didn't understand why they didn't have why they didn't tie his guy up or whatever. So he runs to Blackbeard's. Runs to Blackbeard's room and Blackbeard's, like I said, is he's in the midst of uh, a bunch of beautiful women and everything. And then uh, Blackbeard say something smooth like, "Damn!" He is like, "I didn't order a boy. <laughs> like I don't even get down like that. What's happening?" He's like, "They torturing him." So Blackbeard he comes all nonchalant. He puts on his little silk little robe and everything. He comes up and he's like, uh, "Correct me if I'm wrong, but did I ask anybody to be tortured tonight? Did I ask you all to do that?" They like, "No, but we figure we can get the information out of him faster and everything." He's like, "Come on, get, come on, let me uh, let's take a walk on the beach." So as they take a walk on the beach, the pirates mad and everything, so they beat up his guy. They beat up uh, Thomas Lowe's guy while Blackbeard is on the uh, beach walking with Thomas Lowe. Now, this conversation was so smooth and nice line. It was this is like this is this was like the ultimate uh, game of mental chess right here. Blackbeard tells him in basically long, long urban story short. Look, I know you're not scared of death. I know you think you're playing me, but I'm really playing you because I'm going to torture you with your vanity. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to get you. I'm going to, your little boy, I'm going to hang him up. I'm going to flay him. I'm going to, I'm going to make it unbearable. I'm going to put him in the town square. And this right here is going, this is going to uh, affect you more than anything. Because, because you won't give me what I want. This is happening to him. You know, as well as I'm going to send word that you're a, a coward and a traitor. So, 
that's how I'm gonna torture you. So if you think you gonna, you think you playing me, I'm really playing you. So he's like, dang. He is like, man, touche. He is like, man, I didn't even see that one coming right there. Okay. So Thomas goes back to his room, and this guy all beat up on the floor. His guy crying. Oh, I wanna go home. Oh, this is, oh, this is too much for me. I didn't sign up for this. He's like, don't worry about it. Tonight we are gonna kill Blackbeard. So. Like I said, Thomas is a, a drag, uh, jack of all trades, and they wait till the guards feed him. They feed him their meal. They uh, go to the window. You know, he he picks the lock on the window and everything. Real, he was real smooth out there. Climbs down. He climbs uh climbs down, kills one of the guards and everything. And he goes to the uh, the quartermaster's uh, supply house, and he go he goes there he goes there and the first thing he sees, he has his little small little pocket knife out, and he's th he's about to stab uh, the quartermaster's uh, guy that was in the wheelchair. But we see we see uh, that he's been smoking opium. He got his little opium pipe. He getting high. He you know he getting higher than the uh, dandruff on a giant's head. You know for real. He getting higher than a uh, the barcode on a satellite. So he, he he like this, so he was like, oh, I see I don't have to do nothing to him. So he walked past him and he walks into old girl's room and keep in mind that he didn't seen her swimming in the swimming uh swimming, you know, naked and you know he's fascinated by her because she's so, you know, business minded as well as she's a uh, she's a fugitive too. You know, everybody's here is a fugitive in this thing. So she sleep and he sees that she has the keys underneath the uh the pillow so he slides and grabs the keys up out of the pillow underneath the pillow bow he goes into the goes into the um goes where they keep all the supplies at and he's looking through this this box that was on the ship that he was on and as he's as he's looking through that old girl come up there she got her sword like you looking for this and it's a locket, and the locket, is, the locket. She opens up the locket, and it's a picture of a woman. He was like, "Yeah." He was. She was like, "You know, you risk getting killed for this." He was like, "Well, I, you know, you would too, and stuff." So he plays on her. He plays on her sympathy as far as a woman. Like, yeah, this is my, this is my wife, and all that, and this is the only thing I have of her. So she gives it to him, and everything. It was like, you know, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do it like that, and everything. You could have just asked me for it. So. He gets back to the room, climbs up in the window, and his 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 his, his, his guy's like, "What what's that right there?" He's like, "This is the way to kill Blackbeard." And he opens it up, and true enough, it's a picture of a, a picture of a woman. And everything. He's like, "Was that your wife?" I'm like, "No, nah, this some whore up in uh some whore uh I met a long time ago or something like that." But it got a secret compartment and it has a tube in it, a valve, as a matter of fact, a poison. So. He's like, yeah, this is how I'm poison Blackbeard. So he goes to Blackbeard's uh he goes to Blackbeard's room and when, when he goes to Blackbeard's room, Blackbeard is sitting in the Buddha position with all these little the, those little thin um needles from his head because he's practicing acupuncture on himself, reading this reading uh this Chinese scroll of the different pressure points on the body and everything to receive you know, to uh, you know, soothe his headache and everything. So Blackbeard like, what's happening? He's like, well, you know, I solved half the ledger and everything. You know, I want to talk to you. So he's like, all right. He's like, let me take these little pins up out my head and everything. He's like, hey, where you learn that from? He's like, it's Chinese, blah, 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 all that. So he's realizing that, yeah, Blackbeard is real uh, 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 educated criminal. He's real smooth about this. Yes. So he, um, they talking and everything. And he, he uh, pours a drink. He is like, listen. He was like, I know my chances of surviving is slim and everything, but you know, I want to prove my worth and everything, and I don't want you to do anything to my my guy and whatnot. So uh, I'm gonna give you what you want. So Blackbeard, all right, cool. That's what I'm talking about. He was like, well, let's celebrate it. And he was like, you you know, you will portray the uh, the British the uh, the British Empire and the, and all this. He was like, yeah, for my life. He was like, a man, you you offer me a chance to live longer. A man on his deathbed will give anything just for a couple of seconds longer. So, yeah, I'll do that. So, he poured a drink and everything. And, you know, of course, the thing is, everybody thinking that he didn't put the, he didn't put the poison. He slid his poison in the, in, the, in the cup. So, Blackbeard, Blackbeard, he grabs the cup closer to old boy. So, 
and then old boy grabs Blackbeard's cup and then it's a momentary pause and they looking at each other and then they both drink from the drink from the little goblins and everything. And you thinking like, Dad, he didn't Blackbeard didn't got him, didn't trick them. <laughs> but little little they know as he's walking away, they show a scene where he was poisoning all he's uh lacing every last one of the um uh, the ledger with poison and then they show Blackbeard, he's uh reading the ledger and everything and so the, the the poison is soaking into his pores and everything. So you like, I was like, oh man, this right here is ridiculous. That was like, that was real clever of him. So, uh, you know, he's back. He, he's back. He's back in the room with his guy. He's like, yeah, we gotta go. He's like, we gotta go right now. It's done. So they they escape and they on they they right here they right here at the uh, at this bluff. At, the, at this bluff, you know, and they looking at it, he's like, we're about to jump in this little boat right here, but as before they do that, they see some Spanish, some Spanish pirates, and this one guy that's the, um, this one guy that's, uh, wanted for treason and things of that nature right there, and he's like, dang, what is he doing here? He's like, oh, the Spanish is hooking up with these pirates? He's like, oh, okay, alright, alright, I see what this is. He's like, listen, I gotta investigate this more, because this is more, uh, crucial than just killing Blackbeard. It's bigger than Blackbeard now. You know, they got the Spanish trying to get in on this, get in on this too. So, you know, they need this information. He's like, so we got to save Blackbeard so I can stay here a little bit longer. So you got to run back to the, you got to run back to the, you know, to the, to the, uh, to the place and everything and uh, where they was being held captive and everything. And Blackbeard at this time, Blackbeard going into convulsions, he falling on the ground, his girl finds him and everything. She crying and everything. She like, she was like, she's like, what's happening? What's happening? And he was like, the doctor, the physician, the physician, go find him. And then so the pirate's like, what you want us to do? Bring him here or kill him? And the old girl like, kill him. And he like me like, you know, trying to say no because his his throat is closing up on him. Whatever the poison he is, he gave him is, you know, it slowly starts to close up your throat, your lungs, your ch chest, things of that nature right there. So uh, he does. Um, he he's running through the hallways, Thomas Lowe, and he's fighting the pirates and everything. He finally gets to Blackbeard's uh uh chamber and the girl pulls out two pistols on him and she is like, Get away from get away from me, like I can save him. I got this valve right here, this valve right here will save him. Like you poison me, like, nah, I didn't poison me, he been having headaches, blah blah blah, you know, trying to talk his way up out of him. She shoot him in the shoulder. Blah. He like, man, he fall back and everything, but he recovers himself and he it was phony that that part right there. Cause she she should have shot him twice because he had two pistols on. Him. But he gets the other gun up out of her hand some type of way, and he puts it on Blackbeard's head. And at this time, all the pirates bust in, bust in, and everything. He's like, "Back up!" He's like, "I'm trying to save his life and everything." So he puts the little vial, uh, a form uh, of antidote, up in his Blackbeard's mouth and everything. And he clear, you know, he starts to breathe well and all that. So Blackbeard's like, you know, don't kill him, you know, good physician, all that type of stuff. So, you know. Then they show like a day later. He's on. He's walking on. The, he's walking on the beach. And the old girl is taking another. She's skinny dipping again because that's how she swims and everything. You know they had a little dialogue about that flirting subliminals. You know what I'm saying? Uh, double entendres and puns and all that. You know that uh, hint hint wink nod nudge nudge type of thing was going on with that. And so he's swimming with her and stuff. Then you they show they show her her guy. He's in a wheelchair, and Blackbeard walks up like, can you fix the device and everything? Come to find out, her guy doesn't really need to be in a wheelchair. He stands up, you know, he's a little wobbly and everything. He's like, yeah, I can fix it, you know. But what about old boy? He's like, well, he's like, listen, he tried to kill me last night, but then he saved my life. So obviously he wants something, and I want something. So I'm going to keep him alive until I can get everything that I want about him, you know. Then, so... They look and they both looking at him. Uh, he was like, obviously, I see you got a weakness for old girl. So I was like, oh. so it was it, all in all, long urban story short, it was a very good setup. It was a whole bunch of stuff in this one episode. It was like they was, you know, they was compressing it, a whole bunch of little things, and then you know, it was other little stuff in there. So this is my uh, review on. Uh, NBC's Crossbones. I will be watching it every week as well as I'll be posting other videos 
um, besides this one, but this is just the first one of many. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this and everything. You know, I tried to condense it as much as possible. And uh, I'll holler at y'all later.